Well, it is up YouTube. Welcome back to Stocks by the Numbers. And today we're taking a look upon special request from a new subscriber, Daski. Uh, first of all, I do want to apologize. This gentleman reached out about two weeks ago, the last time I made a, uh, a video, and he asked me to check out this company. And uh, of course, we missed a big pop here today. Uh, however, I do want to apologize overall because, uh, again, as I might have mentioned, uh, I am kind of in the middle of a hectic situation here. I'm in the middle of a move. So, you know, it's going to be rough for the next several weeks. However, you know, I'm giving you guys my word because no one has really jumped ship in the last several uh, weeks since I haven't really been putting out too much content. You know, you guys have stayed here and supported me. So, you know, you got my back. I got yours. However, I do want to say I do not want this channel to be a supermarket of stocks. So I understand that, you know, you guys want uh, stock updates and market updates, you know, uh, maybe a couple times a day, every day, every other day. I understand. But also, you know, the, I do have the potential to make a video every day and just talk about some random stock. However, if I'm not really convinced of a direction, overvalued or undervalued, I'm not just going to make a video just to make it. And, and I hope you guys do appreciate that because... You know, a lot of other investment channels out there, you know, they make it their business to pump out a video like every 40 minutes, every hour, and talk about some stock, keep you guys updated, and it's nice. However, at the end of the day, you know, unless big news hit, you know, if we're talking about investing, not trading, you really don't need me to, to you know, update you guys that often. So, you know, on one hand, it's nice to constantly be updated, but also on the second hand, on the second hand, on the other hand, um, you know, I, I don't just want to keep pumping out videos. Okay, it just seems artificial, in my opinion, you know, if I'm like, we're looking at Daski today. And, you know, if this, if, if I didn't have a clear view of where this could potentially go, then I don't want to make a video. I don't just want to, you know, ramble off some numbers and, and I, I hate ending the video knowing that a stock could go either way because I know it, you know, there's not much conviction there, but I'm always going to be honest with you guys. But again, I don't just want to do a video on a different stock every day, you know, because then we're just throwing a dart at the board and basically I'm just polluting YouTube <laughs> with these useless stock review videos. So if I have no conviction in a trade or an investment, you know, it, it, then it's not worth your time. So I'm not going to inundate you with a bunch of videos. However, if I do have a couple of things to say, I'm definitely going to make a video. And I might make three, four, five videos a day. If I have to keep you guys updated, I might not make a video for two or three weeks. If there's something out there that doesn't warrant your attention. So, I don't know. Random disclaimer. But hey... Let's jump into it. Okay, so we're looking at Dasky today, uh, ticker symbol DSKE listed here on the NASDAQ. As you can see down here, it is the largest owner and a leading consolidator of flatbed and specialized transportation in North America. Okay, we have a market cap of a little over 400 million with a PE of a touch over eight. Okay, first of all, very low PE based on just glancing at the company. However, you know, I think Intel also has a low PE um, and that stock has been getting destroyed. So, you can't always use the PE as your indicator. However, it could potentially be a little bit higher, right? Looking at a market cap of 400 million, let's scroll down here. First of all, uh, the company uh, net income negative here in 2019. However, maintaining these revenues, so to speak, uh, touch below one and a half billion last year, a little below 1.6 billion. But net income positive, uh, basically every year except 2019. Now, with total revenue of a little below 1.6 billion, again, 400 million dollar market cap. So the stock is trading at 25% of yearly revenue that was brought in last year. So, which means this can easily double, in my opinion. We bring this market cap up to 800 million. Now we're looking at what, like a, uh, like a 12, 12 and a half dollar stock right? Because we're a little over 400 million. And at a market cap of 800 million, it's only half of yearly revenue, right? Now, they're supposedly beating up the stock the last couple of days. 
uh, because numbers were uh, a little bit shy of analyst estimates. However, big news today, uh, as you can see here, almost a 10% jump, over a 10% jump, and then, of course, people have been taking profits, and the founder sold his stake back to the company. And if we switch over here to this Market Watch article, you can see a uh, deal to buy founder Don Desky's 28.6% uh, stake in the trucking company for $107.6 million. More importantly, it says that the company is paying roughly $6 each for a little under 18 million shares. Now, first of all, two ways to look at this, right? Uh, if a company buys back its own shares, chances are they believe in the company. Okay. Uh, also, it's done if a float is too high. Sometimes you might have a company buy back some shares of stock. However, you know, these companies usually don't dig themselves into a hole. So if, you know, they're going out on a limb today to purchase roughly uh, a 28.5% stake in their company for $6 a share, well, you know, common sense should tell us that they probably think that it's worth more than $6, Right? I'm sure we can all agree on that. So that's why when announcements like this are made, boom, 10% pops. Sometimes less, sometimes more, but either way, you know, I'm sure you guys understand, you're going to see a positive reaction in the stock. I uh, just wanted to switch over here to TradingView uh, just to show you guys the last couple of earnings. Uh, as you can see, this is going back uh, basically the beginning of the year, uh, back in January, and you can see a nice beat here at top and bottom line. Uh, next quarter, beat top and bottom line. Uh, this quarter, again, miss on the EPS side, uh, beginning of August. However, nice surprise here on the revenue side, coming in almost $50 million, over 10% higher than what analysts were estimating. And here, uh, obviously coming off the back end of that quarter, analysts basically saw the big difference and they raised those estimates up, as you can see here, to about $466.5 million. And the company comes in slightly under that at $462 million. So they were kind of in the ballpark with that one, uh, coming in less than 1% miss on the revenue side. And when I see a jump like that in analyst estimates, and the company still has a jump in revenue, but just slightly misses, I don't really view that as a negative, right? Because again, going back here, you know, estimating 430 million, they come in with 480, and then they jump to 466 million, right? So that's what, like a seven and a half, eight percent jump in their estimates, and the company still almost got to those estimates and just slightly missed. So the EPS side, yes, definitely, definitely raises a red flag, something for you to be worried about. However, the revenue is pretty healthy and stable here in this company so far the last couple of quarters. So you can't beat them up too much. However, trucking company, flatbed company, you know, people may potentially be ju just tying this into the cost of gasoline overall, price of diesel and everything like that. So, you know, you, you could have a couple of negative factors uh, affecting the share value of the company. But again, they spent big money buying back Again, uh, what was it, 28.5% stake at $6 a share. So, you know, if you can get the same cost or around the same cost as the company itself, chances are over several years, it's probably going to work out for you, in my opinion. So, you know, they per they paid 6 here it's at 65 but if we like it at 65 at 6 if it drops down to 55 5.25, I mean, you know, we're just going to step in even more and lower our cost basis. Uh, last thing before I let you guys go, I wanted to switch over here to stock charts because as you can see, we have an RSI here. We're looking at the daily, by the way. We have an RSI of a touch over 61, which has been rising, but still has a little bit of potential to go higher. Um, I drew out the Bollinger Bands here. And as you can see, the top Bollinger Band 661, and you can see today that the company, uh, excuse me, the stock popped to over $7 slightly and pulled back and closed right below that top Bollinger Band. We have a MACD also rising, which in my opinion is going to give this a little bit of short-term momentum, I feel, back up to the 780 mark, which you can see is the 200-day moving average. But keep that in mind, 780, right? Now we're going to switch over here to the weekly. And check this out. First of all, RSI sub 50, right? So we still have some potential uh, to uh, continue this momentum. MACD rising up. 
And uh, more importantly, you can see, look at these two bounces here off this 200-day moving average here at roughly 590. And of course, resistance. And then look at that, multiple weeks of support. As soon as it broke, it got right back above and closed above this 200-day moving average. So in my opinion, this is our support right here. Uh, you know, a little below $6 a share. And again, if you are able to potentially get in at sub six, in my opinion, I think it might be a good buy there at those levels. But more importantly here, looking at the weekly, look at this top Bollinger Band, 782. And of course, you have our 50-day moving average here at 803. So the top Bollinger Band on the weekly, 782. Switching back to the daily, 200-day moving average, 780. So that's why I'm saying, in my opinion, possibly, I mean, it could happen by the end of the week, but in the next couple of weeks, in my opinion, you're probably going to see the stock start to rise up above that uh, seven and a half, seven and three quarter level and try to touch that 780, 782 level, potentially even, what was it, 803, I think, on the weekly, 803 on the 50-day moving average. So that, in my opinion, next couple of weeks could happen. Uh, long term, though, as I said, um, for this company to go up to a market cap of half the revenue they brought in last year, we're looking at a $12 stock. And the company just bought over $100 million worth of shares at $6 a share. So there's a lot of people involved, and it might not be you, and that's why I make these videos. Again, not necessarily just short-term trades, which we might have here, but more importantly, nice, sound, more stable investments for the long-term portfolio. And I'm going to leave it there. Uh, once again, this is Stocks by the Numbers. I want to thank you guys for stopping by. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please drop it down in the comment section. I'm usually very quick to reply. Um, just like everyone on YouTube says, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Helps out the algorithm. Helps me get a few more eyes on the channel. If you appreciate the content I'm putting out, please do me a favor. Push this push the subscribe button. Uh, obviously, that means a lot to me as well. But whether I have 100 subscribers or 100 million subscribers, I'm probably still going to make the videos the same way. And if I have something that does not warrant your attention, I am not going to be a supermarket of stocks and just continue to pump out videos for you guys so that I can grow my channel and you can potentially take consistent losses in your portfolio. That's not what we're here for. We're here to look at sound companies with stable numbers and good balance sheets and see what will be worth more potentially in two, three, five, ten years down the road because those are the life changers, not the 50, 100% return that you can make on an option real quick tomorrow. I promise you. So I'll leave it there. And, you know, I just want to thank you guys. Uh, you know, no one jumped ship. Uh, my subscribers didn't go down in the last couple of weeks because I didn't make any content. I really appreciate it. Again, a little hectic over here on my end. Going to be going uh, into a move in the next couple of weeks. So, you know, I will try to be more consistent with the content. But, you know, I give you my word. If you guys do reach out and you do want me to look at something specific or if there is something time sensitive, I will definitely make a few minutes for you guys and uh, try to help you out the best way I can. But like I always say... I understand the markets are rocky, volatile, and uncertain, so moving forward, I wish everyone success. I hope everyone makes a couple of dollars, and thanks for stopping by. Hope you had a good Monday.